This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. And this is a painted bunting. Songbirds like this are either male and very colorful or female and a little less colorful. Huh, that's not right. Wait a second, what's this? I think it's a cardinal. But typically, male cardinals are bright red and female cardinals are grayish brown. But this cardinal is both. So is it male or female? Ah, it turns out it's both. This is a rare kind of bird called a bilateral gynandromorph. It's split perfectly down the middle. Half is genetically male and colorful, while the other half is genetically female and less colorful. Male, female, or both, all birds have strange bones. They're hollow inside, which makes them lighter to help the bird fly. But wait, there's something strange going on with these bird bones. These are from the Chicago Academy of Sciences. It's where I'm filming all of the specimens in this video. But here's the thing, they have a bunch of holes in them. Why? Ah, okay, so these holes are called pneumatic foramen. They're connected to the bird's lungs. When a bird breathes, air can enter these holes and passes through the inside of the bird's bones. Birds can breathe through their hollow bones. They can breathe air through their backbone, their sternum, and even through their leg bones. And they use that air to sing. This is a wood thrush. They have my favorite song. Wait, did you hear that? The thrush sang two notes at once. How can birds sing two sounds at the same time? Ah, here's how. Birds sing using an organ in their windpipe called a syrinx. There are four membranes on the syrinx. Birds can stretch these like vocal cords to create different sounds. But see how the syrinx has two different sides? Birds can stretch the membranes on either side independently and make two different sounds come out of each side at the same time. That's how birds can make two sounds at once. 
These sounds can be very strange, like a willow ptarmigan, or a capuchin bird. A gray go-away bird. A loon. And a bald eagle. Wait, that's not what an eagle sounds like? That's definitely what an eagle sounds like. Never mind. It turns out this is the sound of a red-tailed hawk. I'll show you what eagles actually sound like. But first, these videos take a lot of work to put together. So it would really mean a whole lot to me if you sat through this short segment about this video's sponsor, KiwiCo. They put together monthly crates that are delivered to your door with all of the supplies that you need for fun, hands-on science projects. I grew up doing projects like this, and they really encouraged me to love learning. They have various lines for all age groups. So if you'd like to try it out, go to kiwico.com charlie and use code charlie to get 50% off your first month of KiwiCo. What was I wondering again? Oh yeah. Here's what eagles actually sound like. In movies, they often use the screech of a red-tailed hawk for an eagle because it sounds a little bit more dramatic. Do you hear that noise? Ah, it's a bunch of my favorite birds, chimney swifts. Chimney swifts. They're moving around in what looks like a giant tornado. Bird swarms like this are called murmurations. They're composed of thousands of birds, but far away, it looks like a giant amorphous blob dancing aimlessly through the air. But these swifts have a destination in mind. They're heading towards this chimney. Watch closely. They'll spiral around it for a while. And after some time, <gasps> they fly inside. A chimney is the favorite nighttime resting spot for a group of chimney swifts, also known as a scream. You know how a group of crows is called a murder? Well, other bird groups have names too. A group of budgies is called a chatter. A group of finches is a charm. You can have a gullery of gulls, a bouquet of pheasants, an unkindness of ravens, or my favorite, a flamboyance of flamingos. Birds love to rest on this tree in my backyard. But what's that? The leaves are all bumpy. 
It looks like something is growing inside there. To find out what it is, click this video.